Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing something really special. I've had this design on my mind for quite some time now and what perfect time to do this but this cold season. Or should we say scarf season. To be honest, this is the first time I'm doing this as well, so we'll be learning how to do it together. And to create this, we need a few things. For this project, I'll be using a 20 millimeter brown cabochon, a set of pliers and wire cutters, measuring materials, a mandrel or a bottle, a hammer and bench block, a marker, and different wire gauges, all of which are listed down below in the description. Oh, and by the way, I just opened an Amazon storefront where all the tools I use both in jewelry making and content creating are collated. So if you want to check them out, the link is also down below. And now I'm sure you guys are really excited to make this as much as I am. So let's get started. First, we need 34 centimeters of 12 gauge dead soft round as our frame wire. Take a round mandrel or bottle to shape the wire. Here I'm using a bottle that's a little bit above 20 centimeters in circumference. Next, we're going to hammer the ring to stabilize the shape and texturize it to create an interesting pattern. Now let's shape and hammer the spot where we're placing our stone on. Here I'm bending the legs of the wire slightly while checking if the stone will fit in that area. Take 12 centimeters of 18 gauge half hard, half round wire to connect the back wires together while carefully shaping the frame wire to conform to the back of the stone. Thank 
Now that we've shaped the back, it's time to cage the stone. We'll be doing this by folding the wires forward and around the stone. To do this, first mark the wire where you want it to fold and carefully bend the wires with a pair of pliers and your fingers. When you're satisfied with the shape, fold the wires a bit more forward and then shape it with a pair of round nose pliers to create what looks like waves. Now we're going to hammer the waves we just shaped to make sure that they have a tapered look. Remember to always hammer the back side of the wire, not unless you want to texturize it. Now secure the wires around the stone, making sure that the ends of the wire are tucked at the front. This way will take away the risk of the wire ends snagging into the clothes when worn.
And now our stone is totally secure. Speaking of security, now is a perfect time to talk about today's promotion from Surfshark VPN. Securing your stones and wires is as important as securing your internet data. In today's day and age, big companies and cyber criminals can spy on all of your online activities and breach your privacy. To make sure that doesn't happen, you can use a VPN. A VPN, or virtual private network, adds security to your online activities by hiding your IP address, location, browsing habits, and encrypts your internet traffic. In other words, a VPN secures your data by swapping your device's current location to a new one. It's like traveling to a different country without actually physically traveling. By doing this, not only does it secure your data from getting stolen, but you can also watch shows from other countries that are restricted in yours. And for that purpose, I use Surfshark VPN. Surfshark lets me watch shows on Netflix, Crunchyroll, and other online streaming services without worrying about geolock content, which means I can bypass that problem and make sure that I can watch my favorite international shows by choosing which country server I want to watch from. Today, securing your online activities has never been this affordable. For a little over $2 a month, you can now be safe in the internet more than ever. And you can only do that with Surfshark. Surfshark is one of the leading VPN services in the market that offers solid security, privacy, and amazing performance to make sure that your browsing experience is secure at all times. And if you use my affiliate link down below, you can get plus two months free when you subscribe to Surfshark's VPN and services. What are you waiting for? Click on the link down below to get Surfshark VPN today. Now let's get back to today's tutorial. So going back to what we were doing earlier, we're going to cut two pieces of 18 gauge square wire in 10 centimeters. We'll be using these to accent the stone and to also help secure the stone further.
Now we're going to cut two pieces of 18 and 20 gauge square wires to start creating swirls on the sides of the stone. To start the swirls, you'll have to create a hook on one side of each wire and connect it to the frame from outside in. And then on the left side of the piece, you're going to start twirling counterclockwise and on the right side clockwise, just like in the video. Also, you can use a pair of pliers to tighten and adjust the swirls. So now we are going to start mirroring what we did earlier, but like I said before, this time we'll be twirling our wires clockwise.
So the next thing we're going to do is to shape the wire into an inverted S shape at the end of the wire. And then we're going to crimp it repeatedly to create a tapered and sharp look with a round nose plier. Now we're going to take another two pieces of 20 gauge dead soft square to create more swirls but at this time we're going to start them in the upper portion of the previous swirls. Also this time we're going to make them smaller than the previous ones. The last wires we're going to use for this section are 16 gauge half rounds. Basically what we're going to do is to start from the first swirl and kind of trace it along to the second swirl and around the top. 
actually at this stage it took me a while to figure out how i'm going to end this part because i needed to make sure that the tapered curls we made earlier would be secured and would still remain its form at the same time Thank you. 
Okay, so I guess this is the last pair of wires we'll be using for this piece. So we're going to need another two pieces of 20 gauge squares and these will go on the top of the stone just to make things look more cohesive and balanced and at the same time cover some areas that needs to be covered. Oh, I completely forgot. We still need to make the stick. <laughs> okay, to make the stick, we are going to use 16 centimeters of 12 gauge round wire. You can make it shorter if you want, um, depending on how you're going to use it. If you're going to use it with a thinner scarf or if you just want it to be like shorter in general. We're going to shape one side of it into a loop and since this is dead soft, it is still a good idea to hammer the wire to harden it. Also, make sure that you file the other end of the wire into a blunt point or round it off with a wire burr. This part is completely optional, but basically I just want to ornate the stick with a swirl to make it look more cohesive with the ring.
And now we are done. So as you can see, guys, I added a chain off camera. Actually, this was a last minute thing because I saw a piece of chain lying around my stuff. So I thought it would be a good addition to the piece. And I think it looks great. So how do you guys find this tutorial? Do you like it? If you do, please don't forget to give a thumbs up and write a comment down below at the comment section. I'd love to know what you guys think. And of course, do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We've already reached 8,000 subscribers and I'm really excited for the new chapter of this channel. Now, if you guys don't know, I am planning on doing a major giveaway when this channel reaches 10,000. So please make sure that you're subscribed and also share the channel to your friends, family, co-workers, or just anyone you know. And also please do check out Surfshark VPN and my Amazon affiliate links to support this channel. By the way, I'm quite active on Instagram and Facebook. So if you have any questions, suggestions, or would just like to say hi, just send me a DM. And one last thing, if you guys use any of these tutorials, it would be great if you can send me a photo of it or tag me in your socials so I can see them. It's really a joy to see that these tutorials are working and are helping you in your wire wrapping journey. And of course, it's always a good practice to credit your references. So there you have it. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial as much as I enjoyed making it. Thank you again for watching and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Happy wrapping. Bye.